Another country hit by rampant inflation is Venezuela. The oil-rich nation's economy is in free fall, with basic goods virtually impossible to buy. And like Zimbabwe, Venezuela's president is looking to China for help. A recent $10 billion loan from China doesn't seem to have even made a dent. CNN's, CNN's rather Rafael Romo has been following the story and joins us now from Washington. Uh, Rafael, you can't even get through those numbers. They're so distracting because we are facing a situation um, that is increasing increasingly dire uh, the longer we watch oil remain at these depressed levels. Yeah, oil uh, shortages of basic fruit product, products. I mean, it's, it's a very bad situation in Venezuela. But you know, Maggie, Venezuelans have long considered gasoline almost like a birthright because their country has so much oil. And in fact, among some of the largest oil reserves in the world, for the first time in 20 years, though, the government is raising gasoline prices essentially because it has no other option. It's the first hike at the pump in Venezuela in almost 20 years. I used to fill up my tank with three bolivars, this woman says. Now it's 330. The government of President Nicolás Maduro raised the price of gasoline by a whopping 1,329%. Still, in U.S. dollars, that's only 38 cents a gallon at the official exchange rate. Why the hike? According to some estimates, Venezuela was losing $12.5 billion a year in gasoline subsidies. What's the main reason, in your opinion, that the Venezuelan government decided to raise gasoline prices? They need to raise money. They have a huge fiscal deficit and they had to do something. In spite of the increase, the fact remains, Venezuela still has the cheapest gasoline in the world. In fact, the fuel is still cheaper than water. A liter of bottled water in U.S. dollars is 170 versus 10 cents for gasoline. But PDVSA, Venezuela's state-run oil company, is in dire need of infrastructure improvements. With the price of oil at less than $30 a barrel, the money just wasn't coming in. However, the increase is minimal and it's not really going to be enough to help PDVSA pay for what it needs to pay, right? No, it's, it's not enough to solve the really dire problems that they have. They have not only their fiscal deficit, they have bonds coming due, they have debt of PDVSA and of the government, and they have high expectations among the people. In a country virtually flooded with oil, the average Venezuelan has much bigger concerns shortages of basic food items and medicines in an economy that seems to have crashed along with oil prices. And the economy seems to be getting worse in Venezuela. Maggie, bakeries are now complaining that they haven't had access to dollars to buy the raw ingredients they need to produce bread. So now we're seeing shortages of bread, something that is, as you can imagine, worrying a lot of people in the South American country. It, it, it is hard to imagine. Rafael, I mean, how are people coping? Is there a fear um, that if it continues, they won't even have basic food goods? I mean, we know the lines at the supermarkets have been uh, horrible, but at least they've been able to get their hands on something. I mean, are we approaching a new phase in this where they can't even get something like bread? Yeah, that's an excellent point, Maggie, because Venezuelans have grown accustomed to going to the supermarket and standing in lines for hours and hours to buy simple things like chicken, milk, eggs, just to name a few. And I was taking a look at the numbers and according to the Venezuelan government, inflation in 2015 reached 141 percent. But the IMF for this year, Maggie, says that inflation may reach 700 percent. So as you can imagine, that's going to hit the average Venezuelan very, very hard. Yeah, I mean, numbers like that, they are just not sustainable, which is why we're going to continue to keep a close eye on that country. Rafael, thank you so much. Rafael Romo for us.